Phil's a great guy. I've known him for a long time. Uh, Phil has been part of the news in Los Angeles for almost 30 years now. He's on Channel 11 uh, right now. He was on Channel 4 before. He also hosts a show on uh, the, the, the public access, what's that called? LA City View. LA City View. <laughs> Uh, he's also probably one of the, the best columnists in the Sherman Oak Studio City uh, News, which we all read. It's, it's great. So we're, we're very fortunate to have Phil uh, be, uh, be doing the moderating tonight. Did I forget anything that was important? Okay, good. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to uh, have the candidates uh, change their order just a little bit just to make it fair because we're not going to do it alphabetical because if that was the case, then Paul would be either first or last. So, pick a number one through five. I don't know what you're saying. Alright, so this is, this is yeah. position number one, so if you guys can just go ahead and switch. Is that about right? Hey, take your signs, take your water. One, two, you're staying right there. Three, four, perfect. Thank you. I didn't vote for the movie. So we're going to go for about an hour, maybe a little bit more, and the goal is so that when you leave here tonight, you will have the ability to make an intelligent choice for sheriff when you go vote on June 3rd. This is a great group because everybody in here votes. That's why you're here, we appreciate it, and that's why these gentlemen are here, because they appreciate it as well. So the format is each candidate is going to get an opening statement of two minutes. Bob's there with the, with the timer. You guys have done this before. Then we're going to spend uh, about 20 minutes or so with questions. Some of my questions, some of the questions from the audience. And then the really fun part is each candidate has the opportunity to ask a question of another candidate. And that's going to be a 45 second answers, which is opti you know, optimistic. And then we'll do closing uh, our uh, statements, about 90 seconds each, and that should take us well into an hour. Should we begin? And so we going yep. in this order? Yep. Okay. You can start, sir. Maybe introduce yourself, Assistant Sheriff. All right. We got two minutes for an opening statement. We'll go right down the line. Well, good evening. Uh, thank you very much for your interest uh, in this race. It is a very important race. My name is James Helmold. I'm currently the Assistant Sheriff of all patrol and detective operations throughout Los Angeles County. I'm a 25-year veteran of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Very proud of this organization. Although we've had tough couple of years and this department has been uh, dragged through the mud but because of the actions of a few people but through all this I do see hope hope because the frontline members of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department have in fact been working hard to serve the community and at some point somebody needs to stand up for the honest hard-working deputies that have been on the front line did you know that crime is lower than it has been in the Sheriff's Department area in more than 40 years so certainly we definitely have things that need to be reformed within the organization absolutely but i don't want to lose focus on the on the courage and sacrifice of the hard-working men and women of the sheriff's department and back to that reform i was brought in as a commander to work with the jail commission to actually implement reforms and uh, the jail commission came up with very sound recommendations and they relied upon somebody who was respected and had credibility within the organization and so we actually implemented those reforms and we laid out clear expectations to our hard-working men and women and we developed policy supervision and training to ensure future success and i want to continue those reforms so we have also proper oversight to ensure that we have a lot of the things that we have demanded to be implemented that there's inspectional services to ensure that accountability that you would expect of your sheriff's department and I also want to modernize your sheriff's department in every way so we can deal with the emerging threat of cyber crime, identity theft, and advanced technology moving forward. Thank you for your consideration. I welcome all of the questions, whether they're tough or hard, whatever it is. I think it's a great dialogue, and thank you very much. Good evening. I'm Todd Rogers. I'm the mayor of the city of Lake. We've been on the city council since 2001, been reelected three times. I'm serving my third one-year term as mayor. I'm currently the assistant sheriff in charge of a $2.8 billion budget and all of our personnel and training operations. Been on the department for 29 years. 
I was elevated to my current position 13 months ago to overcome corruption and mismanagement in the Sheriff's Department. Quite frankly, it was a Hail Mary pass by the previous sheriff uh, after he uh, got rid of his previous undersheriff. And speaking of that mismanagement and corruption, we had coercion of department members to contribute to campaigns. We had cronyism in our hiring, promotions, and selection for coveted assignments. We had exclusive uh, cigar smoking patios. We had animosity toward our Internal Affairs Bureau, speeches about working in the gray area, smuggling bulletproof vests from a city to Cambodia, giving CCWs to wealthy supporters and, uh, and politically connected folks while normal people were, were routinely denied. We had hiding an inmate from the FBI, ordered the highest levels of the organization, and permission uh, to wealthy supporters to land their helicopters on department helipads. And now the common denominator with all of these scandals has admitted in federal court to be the subject of a federal investigation. I'm running for sheriff because I represent the people who have been out of the car, never invited into the car, who never drank the Kool-Aid. I'm one of those who's been fighting against this corruption and mismanagement for 29 years. Hopefully during the course of this debate, I'll have time to give you one anecdote after another in terms of how that's happened. But the black cloud has started to lift from the LA County Sheriff's Department. We have an interim sheriff, I'm part of his administration, part of fixing what has been wrong with this organization, the damage that has been caused, and as your sheriff, I'll continue the job. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. My name is Paul Tanaka, and first and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, all of you here from the Sherman Oaks Homeowners Association. Uh, your involvement is what's what's critical to making our community safer, and I certainly appreciate your interest and time in, in attending tonight's uh, forum. I spent 33 years in law enforcement before retiring last August. I started out as a deputy sheriff and worked my way through every rank, retired uh, the rank of undersheriff, the number two position. Uh, during the course of my 33 years, I had the opportunity to work in or command every single division within the largest sheriff's department in the country. I'm also a certified public accountant. I have 20 years working with a local accounting firm in the city of Gardena. Uh, also managed the sheriff's budget. Took it over in uh, 2002 when it was $1.7 billion. It grew to $2.8 billion during the 11 years that I had primary responsibility and never once did we go over budget. We were always fiscally responsible with your tax dollars. And finally, I'm in, uh, in the 10th year, in my 10th year as the mayor of the city I grew up in, Gardena. I've been elected to the city council twice there and, and I'm in my third four year term as the mayor. Uh, I look at this race, I take a look at the, uh, the law enforcement experience, the business acumen, and the political experience necessary that is needed to step right in and help get the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department back on track to being one of the most respective agencies that it has been throughout the years. I want to thank you again very much for your time this evening. starting in the academy, working my way up to the number two spot. Uh, left in 2010 to take over as chief of police in the city of Long Beach. Uh, during that time, working alongside the LA County Sheriff's Department, uh, we had a pretty good team together. Painful to watch what's happened in the last several years in the organization. Uh, a decrease in morale within the organization, a, a decrease in accountability, and a lack of leadership that resulted in the things that you've heard here previously, that you've read about in the paper and seen on TV. And the LA uh, SD is a regional asset. It's a critical asset for all of us. Uh, when you look at where we need to go moving forward, and I won't dwell so much on the past, but talk about the future. Uh, welcome, civilian oversight. We have it in LAPD with the Police Commission, the Inspector General. We have it in Long Beach in a different form, format. I welcome it with the LA County Sheriff's Department. I look at the position as, uh, as sheriff in this county as, if to use a football analogy, kind of the quarterback. To, uh, over public safety issues. And to be a quarterback, you need a team. And I'm, I feel very fortunate that generally the sheriff comes up from within the organization and has the network that, uh, that is inside. 
I uh, have the ability to be able to bring in 29 years of experience with the LAPD to be part of that team. Uh, four years as chief of Long Beach PD to be part of that team. And then last year was president of the LA County Police Chiefs Association to be able to bring in uh, the 45 other chiefs of cities, independent cities throughout the county. They've all endorsed me. They're all supportive of moving forward. We share a common vision. And really that's what policing is. It's a team sport. It's a people business. And it's based on a foundation of respect. So I look at that as an opportunity to be able to, to move forward and once again restore the luster to the badge of the LA County Sheriff's Department. Thank you all very much. Thank you. <clears throat> my problem is that I like to deviate a little bit from my normal opening remarks. Uh, what I like to talk about is uh, my 33 years on the department, retired as a commander. Uh, I'm the whistleblower that had to expose the corruption, the inmate beatings that were occurred, occurring when I went up the chain of command and uh, they wouldn't hear anything about it. Uh, I went to the FAI and the LA Times. Dave Barker subsequently stepped down as a result of that because he knew that was best for the organization, best for the citizens of Los Angeles County. And tonight I'm asking Paul Tanaka for that very same thing, that he needs to step aside. And I say that for these particular reasons. He's deceived the public here recently, last several months, by saying he's a witness to these particular trials going on right now, only to find out just Monday that he is a subject of the, of the investigation, a federal criminal investigation. That being said, he can be indicted for these particular wrongs. Currently, we have eight deputies on trial right now for obstruction to justice for following those orders that you uh, ordered, Paul. Uh, you perpetuated the code of silence uh, by, for years by hiding the malfeasance and the criminal wrongdoing, specifically the Pandora's box that led up to this. And the Citizens Commission on Jail Violence pointed fingers right back at you saying, Paul, you were the problem, you're the one that perpetuated the jail violence. And if you were a CEO of an organization, we would have fired you a long time ago. And lastly, you've got a tattoo on your ankle that's been determined by a federal judge to be a neo-Nazi racist group. We do not need a sheriff as a neo-Nazi racist who refuses to remove it. Tonight, I'm asking you, Paul, to step down. At last night's debate, everyone was in agreement that you should step down, and I, uh, I uh, sincerely agree. I think this is best for the county and best for the uh, LA County Sheriff's Department. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's get right into it, then. <laughs> Hopefully all of you are up on the news. Uh, 20 sheriff's deputies up to the rank of lieutenant were indicted by the feds earlier this year, essentially on corruption charges and abuse of jail inmates. One of those deputies is on trial. Mr. Tanaka is a witness. And as you heard, it's been confirmed that he's a subject of the investigation as well. This is also a question that, um, is it Royal Herman? Or Royan Herman, if you want to stand up. Um, so, Mr. Tanaka, uh, how do you respond to the calls for you to withdraw from the race because of all of this? First of all, ma'am, and to all of you, I'll say that in 33 years of law enforcement, never once did I ever condone, encourage, or tolerate abusive behavior or misconduct by anybody uh, on the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department or government, for that matter. The other thing is, uh, during the course of this investigation that was brought up that the FBI is doing, they had a right... Uh, to certainly do the investigation. But at the time, some of you uh, may not be aware, and the trial was going on, so some of the things that I haven't been able to talk about is that there was an allegation that the FBI was smuggling uh, contraband, dangerous drugs, and cell phones into our jail. And we had a duty to investigate that. So uh, I would ask that before you allow others to uh, attack me because they don't have any qualifications to which to speak, that you uh, take a close look at the issues uh, before you uh, uh, make up your mind. Thank you. Allow me to follow up briefly on this issue and then we'll move on. Um, the Citizens Commission on Jail Violence, of which Chief McDonald was a part, in their report in 2012, a quote, uh, Sheriff Baca and then Under Sheriff Paul Tanaka were blamed for a persistent, persistent pattern of unreasonable force dating back many years. You've described that as a, quote, hit job. Your, your response to that finding by the commission? Uh, first of all, I, I don't know who attributed that, quote, hit job to me. I've never used that term, and I saw that also okay. in the paper. Uh, I, obviously, whoever uh, doing the recording uh, put their own quotes uh, to, to words that I did not use. 
Uh, the, the commission certainly came up with some recommendations that I agree with, with regards to uh, improvements for jail security, but I will again say this, in my 33 years, I was never accused of condoning, tolerating, or permitting uh, the use of excessive force or any other form of misconduct. None of this came up until there was a suspicion that I might run for sheriff. Thank you. Uh, Chief McDonald, this is an area that's patrolled by the LAPD, of course, and probably most of these folks aren't planning on going to county jail anytime soon. So what is the relevance of an elected sheriff to people that live within the city of LA? Yeah, that, thank you, Phil, for that question. Uh, tremendous relevance. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, policing is a team, uh, team sport, if you will. When we have to work together, we rely on each other for mutual aid. The sheriff is the coordinator for mutual aid. God forbid we have uh, another major earthquake and we're gonna rely heavily on the sheriff's department to be able to allocate resources that are coming into the region from all over. Uh, so a, a critical point, we also, uh, the sheriff's department's also responsible for the courts throughout the county, the jail system throughout the county, uh, community colleges throughout the county, and on and on. It's a very diverse, complex organization. Uh, we work, we need to work very well with the LAPD and all of the other uh, 45 other independent uh, police departments within the county and beyond. Let me ask each one of the other four gentlemen to answer that question briefly. I mean, how do you relate the importance of the sheriffs to people that live in, in the city in LAPD type territory? Well, I'll echo what uh, Chief McDonald had mentioned, but it's important that your sheriff fully understands the, the functionality of the sheriff's department and the inner operations. The sheriff's department's responsible for the courts, the jails, the metro rail system, aero bureau, detective operations throughout Los Angeles County, many of our 42 contract cities, by the way, we, we police not to one large city, but to we answer to 42 contract cities and mayors. We also provide homicide and special weapons uh, services to law enforcement agencies throughout the 88 cities. So your next sheriff needs to have a full understanding and functionality and relationships with each of those individual cities and knows how to command all of those components of the sheriff's department. We're all being impacted by AB 109. I'm sure you've heard about that with the state prison realignment where inmates are being transferred to county jails and ultimately into our communities. And that's countywide. It's not just the sheriff's jurisdiction. It's here in Sherman Oaks and everywhere. And that, that AB 109 prison realignment has been a disaster. We're, we're, the state is releasing property criminals, uh, those who steal cars and steal identities and, and break into your businesses. Uh, the problem with that is that property criminals account for 75 to 80 percent of the crime in every single community. So we are all most likely to be victimized by these folks who are being released by the, the state into the county jails and ultimately into your community. So what we do in the county jails to hopefully try to rehabilitate some of these folks and release them into the community better than they came in will have an impact on all of us countywide. There is a tremendous correlation between the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, actually in any county, and local police department. By constitutional law, the sheriff is the top law enforcement officer in the county, and as such, is primarily responsible for restoring order in times of calamity. If you have a, a major earthquake or you have a, uh, a riot, uh, each individual agency is going to be entrusted uh, with restoring order uh, uh, as soon as possible. And it's going to be up to the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department uh, by law to help coordinate those efforts. In addition, you have all the rail lines, public transportation, MTA. That involves, of course, uh, going through the heart of the city. And as such, uh, there is a, uh, a, a close tie with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department in many more ways, again, the jails, uh, community colleges, et cetera. You got a pretty good rundown on exactly what some of the requirements are, but probably the most significant, uh, I'm sure if we can remember the 1994 earthquake, is we run the Emergency Operations Center. And the key part on that is, anytime a city's overwhelmed, the county's the first uh, line of resources. So we need to work closely ahead of time to identify the problems and, and find out what resources we have. What are the logistics of the, uh, of the properties that we're gonna need? Buses, uh, whatever, uh, the tra other transportation items, cell phones, et cetera, et cetera, and have them in strategic locations so that we can be successful. We were separated by the north-south uh, north -south boundary last time when the freeway broke down. So it's up to us to anticipate the particular problem well ahead of time so we can be of service to you in time of dire need. Thank you. Steve Greenbaum. You hear Steve? Steve asked a question. Uh, Sheriff Bach has been here many times and was quite charming. 
But in Steve's words, he's deceived us since he was in charge of a corrupt organization. So let me ask the two current undersheriffs to answer this one, if you would, please. The question is, why should anyone vote for anyone that's still associated with the BACA term? Anyone would you like to go first? You have the microphone. Actually, that's a fair question. And, um, you know, you got to keep in mind that Baca was a duly elected sheriff for four terms. So a lot of people are distancing themselves from Sheriff Baca, but, you know, he was elected to four consecutive terms, and he was actually the superior officer to everybody here uh, but Jim McDonald. And quite frankly, as the chief law enforcement officer, he was superior to Chief uh, McDonald as well, functioning as that chief law enforcement officer. But what I want to bring to the sheriff's department and where Mr. Baca was lacking was expectations clear expectations and holding people accountable for misconduct he trusted some of the wrong people and they needed to be held accountable and that's what i will bring to the los angeles county sheriff's department on december 2nd 2003 i was a new captain at a carson station and i was called to an la area casino by a sitting assistant sheriff working for sheriff Baca. i was escorted to a close uh, part of the restaurant behind the velvet rope and when i sat down the assistant sheriff said you have a tow company out in your area that's very supportive of the sheriff, very supportive of the department. And even though it's your decision, we'd be really appreciative if you would give that tow company an exclusive tow contract. I refuse to do that. I refuse to uh, mitigate discipline against a sergeant who pointed a gun at another sergeant uh, because he was friends with the under sheriff. I refuse to get a deputy click tattoo on my ankle when I was sponsored for that as a deputy sheriff. Not all of us were complicit in the corruption and mismanagement that was going on. When I got promoted 13 months ago, it was a Hail Mary pass by the sheriff to try to fix things within the organization. Thank you. Let me ask uh, Bob down at the end. Um, give us your view on the question that a lot of people are asking, and Sheriff Baca has stated this himself when he retired, that the sheriff's department is being unfairly tainted by the behavior of a few deputies and it's not a broken department. Do you agree or disagree and why? Um, I disagree. 99% of the men and women on the department are good, hardworking people. The failure is the catastrophic failure of leadership that led to where we're at now, uh, led by uh, Paul Tanaka and Lee Baca specifically. And I'll tell you this, if you take a look at what happened in the media the last three and a half years, you've read about all the malfeasance that are occurring, the hiring protocol, the racial discrimination going on in North County, uh, ID inmate, the jail beatings, all of this cross divisional boundaries within the organization. There had to have been a captain, a commander, a chief, somebody within those ranks to have reported this or stepped out. Why am I the only one to have come out to report this stuff? It doesn't make sense. That is the catastrophic failure of leadership. That is why Lee Bogger should be held responsible for this as well as Paul Tanaka. Well, let's give each candidate a chance to answer that question. Do you view this as a department that needs to be fixed from top to bottom or is it the actions of few deputies that have cast everyone in a bad light? Thank you. Uh, you know, when, when you look at the organization and having worked alongside it for 33 years, uh, there's a tremendous number of men and women in that organization that are uh, at the top of their profession uh, and looking for clear leadership, clear expectations, positive leadership as to uh, what we need within the organization to be able to best serve the community. That said, when you look at what's happened in the last several years, there has not been positive leadership, clear expectations. We heard the jail commission testimony about push the envelope, work in the gray, I've got your back, those kind of things. We've got 20 deputies indicted now who's got their back. So you look at that, that's a failure of leadership and, uh, and families are upside down and 20 people are looking at losing their freedom over that. So in looking at that, it's a, an organization in need of some, uh, some uh, quick fixing and, uh, and some long-term uh, stabilization. <coughs> I'd like to remind folks, uh, first and foremost, that Lee Bucket did 48 years of dedicated service to this county. And while he may have been charming, and I, I don't think he was deceitful, I think that the biggest fault that he had was the thing that he and I disagreed on most, is when you promote people to positions of authority, you have to hold them accountable for doing their job. Everybody in this day and age wants to be the uncle and aunt. Nobody wants to be the dad or the mom. Nobody wants to be responsible for issuing discipline and holding people accountable. And that's the biggest problem that the Los Angeles County Sheriff's uh, Department is facing and has faced under Lee Baca. When you talk about being let down, that was the problem, and he didn't want to address that issue. That is what I found is his biggest fault. Other than that, I thought he did a great job. You want to answer that? 
Um, the sheriff's, oh, as far as with regards to the fact that is the sheriff's department a culture of corruption or is it isolated to a few deputies, when you, I currently command all the patrol and detective operations throughout Los Angeles County, when you see the heroic acts of deputy sheriffs, not, not shorter than three months ago, we had deputies taking on fire from a deranged father who took their three-year-old child hostage, and they didn't return fire out of fear for harming that child. So it's hard to look past those acts of valor and bravery. There were clearly leadership failures, and one leadership failure, one indictment of a deputy for misconduct is too much. So, so it is not acceptable to accept misconduct within the law enforcement ranks. So that in and of itself is enough for me. So we don't need to prove whether or not there are a countless number of deputies. One act of misconduct is too much. We can always do better. Well, let me ask Mr. Tanaka the next question. When Sheriff Baca announced his retirement last year, he said essentially that he didn't want the campaign for re-election to be overshadowed by negativity. Yet this is exactly the situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, do you find that ironic, uh, of concern? Uh, I, I think, uh, Phil, that what he was referring to is he, he was led to believe that I was going to run a negative campaign against him. And that was his biggest fear. And you're not doing that. I'm not doing that. No, I'm saying you're not doing that. Right. Right. But, but the campaign, the other candidates have essentially attacked you, asking you to leave, and turned it into an, an issue. And everything we've talked about has had a negative overtone tonight. I understand that. Listen, I've been on the ballot five times before. I've faced this. I, I, every time you put your name on a ballot, you subject yourself to whatever it is that people want to say. If you can't take it, you can't put your name on a ballot. So I understand. And one thing I've learned over my five elections is sometimes we accuse voters of being apathetic. Sometimes that's true. But one thing I've learned in five elections, voters are a lot smart, smarter than we give them credit for. Yeah. This is a quick question for each one of you. Let's just start at this end. Uh, what is your position on issuing uh, concealed carry weapon permits? It's something that the sheriff's job is done. Uh, Ed Galbass, that one, thank you. And Elliot uh, Graham also. I want to acknowledge the, uh, the audience members. You'll get a clear answer from me because right now people are playing. There is a certain um, power and money behind the NRA crowd that's there. And I will just put it like this. There is... The, the law is the law. The Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, you can bear arms in your home and your business. But what I will not do is give mass issuance of CCWs. And there is some recourse. I've gotten a lot of email from NRA and weapons types of people. And that's fine. I'm not looking to take away weapons. But what I'm saying, if we have hundreds of thousands of carry concealed weapons, if everybody in here had a firearm, is that, is that really the society we want? If you go into the theater and there are hundreds and hundreds of people carrying concealed weapons, is that what we want? So I will not play to a certain popularity or an emotion that's out there. I will call it like it is. I do believe that we should have a process where people, we check people's backgrounds and ensure they have training, but I will not be giving mass issuance of CCWs. When I got my current job, I found out the CCWs were being issued to people who were wealthy and connected and had no good cause at all whatsoever. So I took those away from those people. We have a prudent decision that's pending in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is going to eliminate the good cause requirement if it's upheld through the Supreme Court. We are not implementing that yet, and at the same time, I chose not to challenge it. I'm going to let it run its course uh, all the way to the Supreme Court and get some definitive word in terms of what the law of the land is. When I'm sheriff, I think that we need to give law-abiding, normal folks an equal footing in terms of applying for CCW. But there will be background investigations, and there will be stringent qualification and training requirements. But that background investigation is going to include somebody of sound character. I'm not just going to do a, a computer check and find that somebody who is doesn't have a criminal history or mental health history, happens to be a gang member, will not get a CCW from me. Uh, my position has been clear from the start. Peruta, the decision down in San Diego, only reinforced it. Uh, my firm belief is that uh, the right to possess, to own, and carry a weapon is a right given to you by the Second Amendment and not a privilege to be determined by one person. I fully intend to uh, stand by that as Sheriff of Los Angeles County.
You know, I, I'd say that Todd Rogers probably uh, summarized my position very well. We do have a court case pending. It would be uh, taking on additional liability, I believe, at this point, not only uh, relative to workload, but also uh, to litigation, to be able to do anything different than we're currently doing and pending the outcome of that uh, Ninth Circuit decision, which will likely or potentially be appealed to the Supreme Court. Uh, we, I believe in the Second Amendment. Uh, however, uh, when we issue permits, we, make, we need to make sure that the people who have them are properly trained. Uh, as well as properly screened. A thorough background investigation uh, is something that we owe the community to know that anybody who's carrying out there uh, is uh, adequately trained and, and prepared to be able to do it well. Thank you. I'm a constitutional chair. I'm going to uphold the Second Amendment and I'm going to go ahead and uphold the decision when I want to come down to the Ninth Circuit. But here's the cautious part that I need to make sure. I need to protect the applicant. The applicant's the one that's going to be sued. The applicant is going to be the one that's going to be on criminal trial. The applicant needs to be as trained as well as any deputy sheriff or police officer on the street. And the applicant needs to go through trimester shooting. They need to understand the liability of being involved. I don't care how you look at Trayvon Martin or George uh, Zimmerman. It's a tragedy on both sides of the house. Um, I, I just need to make sure that the applicant is protected the best they can be, uh, just in case the uh, scenario does come up. Thank you. Uh, we have a, a few people that have asked a similar question. Heard more, uh, David Elsky, you guys with us, and Susie uh, McGoran. And if you can stand up, I you want to stand up and just acknowledge it. We appreciate your, your input. Um, as some of you may or may not know, uh, newly graduated deputies are assigned to the jail for a period of years, right? And so there's some question if that's the the, the best use of essentially someone with not, no law enforcement experience in a very difficult environment, stressful. So would you consider changing or modifying the policy of assigning newly graduated deputies to work in the jails? Let's just start on the end and go, go right down quickly. Okay, thank you very much. And, and that's, this is exactly to the heart of why you need a sheriff who understands the operations. We've already implemented changes to have people who have an interest in working only in the jail have a career path where that would be conducive to where they work. The problem was is people who did not want to work the jail were doing six, seven, eight years in jail and they didn't necessarily want to be there. But we have to keep a cadre of people pre prepared for emergency responses. We provided thousands of deputies during the Northridge earthquake, during the riots, so we have to have people that are prepared to go. We need to have a modern business approach where we're forecasting and predicting how exactly will we, who we are hiring so we can moderate the, the healthy term in the jail to be about two years because there is a lot of wealthy knowledge in law enforcement by deputies serving in the jail first before they go to patrol, but I would moderate it in about two, two years. The jail commission said there's a difference between the catcher and the keeper function. The catchers being people going out and take, making arrests and bringing people to jail. The keepers are the ones who are content to work within a custody environment and run a constitutional jail. We agree with that. We're implementing that now. Uh, when people apply to Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department as a deputy, they can check a box. Do you want to work custody, patrol, or both? And we're implementing this dual track process where folks can go into custody, graduate from the academy, go into the jails, and choose to make that their career, and then we give them a career path within the jail environment all the way up to the rank of division chief. Eventually what's gonna happen, sooner rather than later, is we're gonna have a professionalized jail staff, we're gonna have people who wanna go to patrol going directly to a radio car from the Sheriff's Academy, and I think that's a good process. Thank you. The problem with the, 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 the problem with the system right now, or at least, uh, sorry, the problem with the system right now, or at least the purported fixes, goes well beyond ideally, ideally what we would like to do. Uh, for some of us who worked in the jails for less than two years, it was a good learning experience. It was a way to uh, communicate 40 hours a week or more with people that we were going to be dealing with, the types of folks that you need, we need to get off the streets to make it safer. But when you get beyond that and you work four, five, six years, it's, it's far too much. and it, 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 it turns people, it hardens them. Not only that, they get to a point where they get comfortable and then they don't want to go to patrol and, and they have a fear of whether or not they can make it off training. The biggest obstacle we have is, our, is the union and the rules. First in, first out, last in, last out. And that's an issue that we're really going to have to take on and work cooperatively with the unions to come up with a solution so that we can solve this problem that has been gone, ongoing since the age of time. Thank you. 
as a member of the uh, Citizens Commission on Jail Violence, that was one of our recommendations that we change that. What we saw was that everybody who went to the, well, before we even got to the academy, people, some of the best and the brightest, potentially deselect themselves out of the process. They don't go into an organization where they know they're going to have to spend six or seven years in the jail. Tremendous opportunity cost. Those who do come in, go to a six-month academy, go into the jails lately for up to six to seven years before they get on the street. They don't want to be there. It's like they're doing time. They get on the street. As soon as they promote, they go back in the jail, and that's dead time for the year or so that they're in there. Then they get back out. If they get trouble, they go back into the jail again in many cases. The highest liability section of the Sheriff's Department has been used as a dumping ground. That's not the way to do business. If it was a business, we'd be bankrupt. We need to move forward with a new way of looking at our approach to recruiting, hiring, training, and deploying our deputies. I agree with what Jim's, uh, I'm sorry, what Donald said here a second ago, it was a dumping ground for supervision. Um, and I do agree with the dual track system. But we can't throw the baby out of the bathwater. It's a constitutional mandate we do that. And when I was asked to be the captain of Mid-Central Jail at the height of this turmoil, and in 2007, I lowered force by 25%. And I did it with no more money, no more supervision, no more cameras, uh, and uh, no more extra bodies going into the system. It's just holding people accountable setting the tone, setting the, uh, the uh, demeanor, and then the quality of work will follow. It's not hard to do, but we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater on this. All we need is adequate, good, strong supervision to go ahead and put the people on track, and that's what we need for the LA County Sheriff's Department as well. All right, and while Bob has the microphone, let me uh, ask you a question. You portrayed yourself as the whistleblower in this campaign, but Sheriff Baca has said that he knew about allegations of abuse long before you came to him. So is it accurate to portray yourself as, as a, a whistleblower or the whistleblower? Uh, actually, that's the first I've heard that one because well, I went to- He said that publicly. I went to Elite Bach on two separate occasions and he walked away from me. And what pushed me over the edge on this is when we had deputies fighting deputies at a Christmas party. Now, when deputies start beating up deputies, what do you think they do to inmates? What do you think they do to citizens on the street? And that was unacceptable. That's what pushed me over the edge. As a matter of fact, it was a uh, Baca statement that said in the news the next day, oh, boys will be boys. They just need to work it out. That is totally wrong. For Lee Baca to close it and, and uh, turn his head uh, another way and, and close his eyes is unacceptable. That's what made me go to the FBI and say, our men and women and the citizens of the LA County Sheriff's Department deserve better. Chief McDonald, you've been endorsed by uh, Chief Charlie Beck and by uh, DA Jackie Lacey. Um, others have other notable endorsements, but what, what role do you think endorsements play in a, an election like this? Well, I think that, you know, I, I think they're very important because I think it's uh, people who are well known to the community uh, lending their, uh, their stamp of approval, if you will, their credibility to a candidate. And in looking at uh, the endorsements that I'm, I'm very humble but proud to be able to, to have, uh, they're, they're members, uh, significant members of the law enforcement community, significant members of the political community, all of which we need to have a relationship with moving forward. At the state level, uh, Attorney General Kamala Harris has strongly endorsed me, uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein. If you look at what we need to do to be able to bring the money necessary to be able to oversee realignment to LA County that we get our fair share, that network, those relationships are critically important moving forward. And I want to thank Philip Jones for that question, by the way, Philip. Um, and can we start down here with you, uh, Jim, and uh, talk about who your, uh, who's endorsed you and who supported you and why you think that's important? Right. You know, I'm not basing my campaign or my advertisements on who I'm endorsed by because I stand on my own merit and I stand on my own qualifications. The endorsements I'm proud of are people that are in the community like Connie Rice or Sweet Alice Harris, who's on the front line in the communities that we serve. With all due respect to the elected officials from LA City, downtown LA, that have endorsed uh, Mr. McDonald, those are very uh, prominent people, and Jim McDonald is actually a very good man. He's a good friend of mine. But at the end of the day, LA County Sheriff's Department reports and answers to 42 separate contract cities, individual communities. So, and quite frankly, people like Don Kanabi and Antonovich, they also endorse Mr. Baca as well. So we need to hang our hat on our own qualifications, on our service to the community and people in the community. That's the best way to, uh, to explain what you offer for the Sheriff's Department in the community. I just got my 86th endorsement this afternoon. 
and they're primarily mayors, council members, and school board members from throughout the county of Los Angeles. And I'm very proud of that because, number one, they're the most trusted level of government that we have anywhere. People in this room, trust your local elected officials more than your state officials, more than your downtown LA officials, more than your federal officials, for sure. And what I'm really proud of, too, is a lot of them are contract city officials. They provide $278 million worth of business to the Sheriff's Department every single year. And they look to me as their preferred candidate. They want me to be the next sheriff because they know I understand that contract model. And so do the independent cities outside of downtown Los Angeles. They want a sheriff that they have experience with. They want a sheriff that they have a lot of trust in moving this organization forward. I'm very proud of my 86 local endorsements. I think, uh, as is mentioned, the endorsements are important because it lets people know that there are others out there supporting you. I'm proud to say that we have the endorsements of a number of local uh, local mayors and councilmen spread out throughout the county of Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, their endorsements are important because they'll go out, they'll reach out to their constituents. So all endorsements are important. I, I don't I don't necessarily believe that there's any one name that's, that, that's more important than others. But I'm certainly proud to have the support of many across the county of Los Angeles. Thank you. Um, microphone's good enough. Again. Here we go. Uh, I want to take the politics out of the LA County Sheriff's Department. My pathway to reform, I talk about the fact that I think we need to have term limits on the sheriff. I'm going after the grassroots, um, the, the grassroots organizations. Um, and that's what I think is going to be uh, what's, what's going to push me along. They're, they're the voters. They're the ones that's going to uh, uh, be taking a look at the candidacy and, and, and truly the ones that are uh, going to serve the, uh, the, the community. So uh, it's strictly a grassroots operation here. Thank you. Um, this is uh, Patricia Bell Hurst asked this good question. Um, and it has to do with the civilian oversight. You, I'm sure, know the LAPD has the police commission appointed by the mayor, which theoretically runs the department. Um, there's been a lot of discussion for a long time about a civilian oversight commission for the Sheriff's Department. The Sheriff's Department recently got an Inspector General, uh, Huntsman, who prosecuted um, the Bell city officials successfully. So let's start on this end, since you're close to me. Uh, do you support the idea of a civilian oversight commission? Why or why not? I absolutely do, but what I want to do is, in a real way, again, remove politics from it. Um, I get disturbed when we have incidents, and, and with all due respect, because I have the highest praise for LAPD, when the Rampart scandal occurred, you know, they had a police commission. There is no secret medicine that's going to stop corruption. What you need to have is openness, transparency, so that when it occurs, you would deal with it in an assertive, smart way, and you prevent it at all costs. So I have a specific proposal to have a two-pronged approach. You would have the Office of Inspector General with attorney-client privilege to actually impact the quality of the investigations to be real, and then have a community oversight commission that would have that we would be responsive to each of those commissions and have a deadline to report within a certain prescribed amount of time to know that you will get the answers that you demand from the Sheriff's Department. If the time has come for civilian oversight, there's no doubt. The, the public trust demands it. We need to do that. But I want to go a step further. I want to open the doors of Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. I want to invite oversight into the organization. I want to embed it in the organization. I don't want to co-opt anybody. I want to bring people in with their opinions, and preferably a lot of people who don't agree with what we're currently doing. I'm sure we have people in this room right now who would love the opportunity to come to the Sheriff's Department and advise me on how we can do our business better. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department did that two years ago dealing with officer-involved shootings. They invited the U.S. Department of Justice in. I want to do the same thing, but I also want to expand that the best practices experts in policing everything that we do, all of our systems and processes, bring them in, evaluate how we do business, and give us recommendations for reform, and we'll be a best practices laboratory for law enforcement everywhere. Thank you. I'm certainly uh, in agreement, I think we all are up here on this one issue, that oversight is absolutely vital. Having trust between your law enforcement agency and the community is, is not optional. It's, it's a must. Without trust, it doesn't work, and we can't serve the community uh, to make it safer for each and every one of you. That being said, I'm not necessarily opposed to a commission, but you know we started out with uh, the Colts, we started out with OIR, we have an Inspector General, and you have too many folks out there, and, and, and they've got, uh, they're have got they all trying to, to do their thing. So I, I like the fact that now there's just an inspector general. We need to give them an opportunity to succeed. 
need to have a cooperative working relationship and uh, sensible and timely implementation of the recommendations and a periodic reporting back to the public so that they understand what's going on in the organization. Thank you. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't had the opportunity. I haven't had the opportunity to work with uh, civilian oversight, both the LAPD and the Long Beach PD. Uh, and most recently, I think you read articles in the LA Times about a proposal put forward uh, by a group of UCLA, sorry, UCLA law students uh, who looked at the LA uh, Police Commission as a potential model uh, with an inspector general function, with the staffing necessary to be able to do independent investigations. Uh, I've worked with that. Uh, I think I'm probably the only one probably the only one up here that uh, has worked with civilian oversight. Uh, I embrace it. It's, uh, it's third party validation for the good work that's being done. When there's problems, we find them, we fix them, and move forward. Uh, but it's transparency. What we're talking about here at the Sheriff's Department is restoring credibility, public trust in an organization. That's a major step forward in doing just that. It's absolutely critical that we have a Citizens Oversight uh, Commission. We have lost the public trust. There is no transparency on this organization. We're not going to open up the doors. We have to take the doors off. I was the first to endorse and support Mark Lee Thomas and Gloria Molina's position on having a civilian oversight. Uh, it's absolutely critical. Uh, we can build a blue ribbon panel oversight committee just like the Citizens Commission on Jail Violence. Lee Baca was the first to accept all 63 recommendations and did it without blinking an eye. We can do the exact same thing by building a Citizens Oversight Commission, uh, and I've got a plan to do this. All right, hold that, Mike. Um, this is just a, a question that I thought might give the audience just some insight into you as, as people. Um, you know, a lot of little kids, when they say, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a policeman, I want to be a fireman. Well, you guys actually did it. Well, I want you to just go down the line. We can start with Bob. Why did you want to become a cop? Oh, I followed my father's footsteps. He was on the department for 24 years. I'm second generation. My son wants to be third generation. And when I left the organization, it wasn't better than the way I found it. So I needed to come back and try and make some changes. I was retired. I could have stayed retired. I invested well. But the idea is that now it's a calling to come back because my son wants to come on the department. i got to make it better than, than the way it is. The Sheriff's Department is an outstanding organization. It really is. It was the preeminent law enforcement organization across the nation, even by building media at one time. Just, but all things said, uh, that's the reason why. I'm talking about when you were a little kid and you said, what do I want to do with my life? Did you know you wanted to be a cop from the very beginning and why? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Now, well, let's, let's go down to the gym. Oh, yeah, thank you. You know, I had always uh, looked at uh, policing as a, uh, a noble profession and something that I, I kind of aspired to. But when I went to high school, I, I fo kind of focused on being an architect. And I, and I remember doing well in that, sitting there at a drafting board my senior year in high school, and uh, a 17-year-old thinking to myself, can I sit at a drafting board eight hours a day, five days a week for the rest of my life? I thought, no way in, in the world. I wanted something that will challenge me every day. I'd meet new people. Uh, I'd be able to have a, a fresh start every day, and at the end of the day, I'd go home and feel like I actually helped somebody. Policing, in my, wor my worldview and my experience, was the only thing that would do that. If you did it right, it satisfied all of those uh, requirements. Uh, growing up in an Asian American household, you're not allowed to think about becoming a cop. Uh, you either have to be a doctor or a dentist or uh, somebody important. So it was certainly never a thought. I went to Loyola Marymount University. I was uh, on my way to getting my bachelor's degree in accounting. I went on a ride along with a, a, because one of my uh, teachers in a sociology class said that's what we had to do. I ended up going on a ride at Firestone, Old Firestone Station with the Sheriff's Department. And it was, for those of you who are old enough to remember, it was like an e-ticket ride at Disneyland. I decided that it was much more exciting than being an accountant. And so I uh, made a change. I graduated Loyola Marymount on the last Saturday in May of 1980. And I found myself at the academy three days later on June 2nd, 1980, and spent my entire adult life uh, in law enforcement. I was a secondary social studies teacher, teaching 12th grade government at Carson High School. And I wanted to be a history teacher, social studies teacher, and a uh, baseball coach. And I went on a ride along with the gang detectives at Carson Station and fell madly and completely in love with law enforcement. The adrenaline, the excitement, I thought the guys I rode with were the, the smartest cops in the history of law enforcement. I found out five years later they weren't that good. They, no, they were great. I'm just kidding. They were phenomenal. 
uh, and I haven't looked back since. It's been a phenomenal career. Uh, if any cop tells you that they don't enjoy turning the lights and siren around, they're not telling you the truth. I still work a radio car today, still take people to jail today because that's what I came on the, the job to do. Back in 1964, my father joined the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. All of his friends that were always over the house were members of Sheriff's Department. He served at Firestone Station for many years, so a lot of them were sort of heroes to me. Um, I'm, I'm aware of his friends who were killed in the line of duty as well. And so this is just part of my heart. I'm with the Sheriff's Department through good times and bad. It is personal for me in the context that we uh, strong leadership stays with the organization during its problems and helps lift it up. So I'm committed to this organization through good times and bad and to public safety throughout Los Angeles County. I love this department. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're going to shift it up here. This might be a little bit more uh, entertaining. Uh, each candidate gets a chance to ask another candidate of their choice a question. Try to make it a concise question and not a speech. And then the, the uh, person whom you direct your question to will have about 90 seconds or so to answer. So you guys all right with that? All right, let's start with you, uh, Mr. Tanaka. You get to ask the first question of uh, any one of your, your challengers here. You are trying to make this entertaining, I understand, but and we've already had the fun in the first five minutes. So, uh, you know, I don't really have any questions for any of the candidates. I, I think everybody up here is, uh, well, certainly well qualified uh, for the job, and we'll just leave that up to the voters to decide. Thank you. All right. Well, why don't we just start right down at the end here with, uh, with Bob Olmstead, um, your opportunity to ask uh, any one of these gentlemen a question. Uh, thank you. Um, I'd like to ask Todd Rogers, uh, he said it again tonight, I've heard it about 15 times, about how he was called into.